Hey there, good Friday to you. I'm Kyle Bosch. Russia says that it is still trying to verify if it has killed the leader of ISIS. The Russian Defense Ministry claims that Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi died in an airstrike just outside of the militant group's de facto capital of Raqqa in Syria last month. Kier Simmons reports. Unconfirmed reports this morning that the leader of ISIS is dead. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, seen here delivering a sermon in 2014, claiming a large area of Iraq and Syria, declaring a caliphate or Islamic state. Russia's defense ministry saying he and up to 330 fighters may have been killed in a strike on May 28th. Posting on the Ministry of Defense Facebook page, according to the information that is being checked via various channels, Ibrahim Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, was at the conference and was liquidated by the strike. The US-led coalition saying this morning it cannot confirm the report. The raid had targeted a meeting of ISIS leaders in their Raqqa stronghold in northern Syria, the Russians say, now believing al-Baghdadi may have been at that meeting. But there have been a number of previous reports of his death and his whereabouts have not been known for some time. This among the few pictures of al-Baghdadi before he emerged as the leader of ISIS in around 2010 after splitting from al-Qaeda. He was officially designated as a terrorist in 2011. The U.S. now offering $25 million for information leading to his capture. Al-Baghdadi was detained at a U.S. prisoner camp until 2009. In the years that followed his release, he built the fighting force that became ISIS. Well, looking sunny and bright outside right now in Fargo, but the chances of rain will start ramping up as we move toward the weekend. Let's check in with meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli for a first look at our Friday afternoon forecast. And thank you, Kyle. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, we've got a nice day out there so far, especially into the Southern Valley, but things will change as we go through the next few hours. Already warm, 78 degrees in Fargo, 71 Devils Lake, and 76 out toward Jamestown with Bemidji holding at 73 degrees. Now, here's what we got on the radar. We are seeing some rain moving in from uh, portions of western North Dakota right now, getting into the uh, Ellendale area and points off to the south, but the bulk of the moisture is uh, well off toward Bismarck and Williston. And it'll make its way through as we go through later on in the afternoon. So clouding up, temperatures not going much further. We'll say lower 80s out there as we go through the next six hours or so. And we'll tell you what to expect as you go through your Father's Day weekend coming up a little later on in the newscast. All right, Justin, we will see you then. The death toll from the London apartment fire has risen again. Police now say at least 30 people perished in the blaze and expect that number to continue to rise as they continue their search. A period of time for our specialists, both from the police and the London Fire Brigade, to fully search that building to make sure we locate and recover everybody that has sadly perished in that fire. We will be doing that as swiftly as we can, absolutely. 24 people do remain in the hospital, including 12 in critical care. Investigators are still trying to figure out the cause of that fire. A Park Rapids, Minnesota teenager was hurt this morning after he crashed his car in Becker County. The Minnesota State Patrol says it happened right around 1 a.m. on a county road near Monaga. Troopers say 19-year-old Kyle Bethel lost control of his vehicle and crashed into a farm field. He was transported to a Fargo hospital, but his list injuries are listed as non-life-threatening. The North Dakota State Patrol has identified a Bismarck woman who was killed in a crash near Tower City. Troopers say 56-year-old Regina Cusick died in Fargo Hospital after her vehicle crossed the median and rolled. The crash happened around 11.30 Wednesday morning. The wife of the gunman who attacked a group of Republicans at a baseball practice on Wednesday says that she is still trying to wrap her head around what her husband did. Sue Hodgkinson spoke with reporters for the first time yesterday. She was married to James Hodgkinson for 30 years and says there was no indication any, anything like this could have happened. James Hodgkinson was shot and killed Wednesday morning after police say he opened fire at an Arlington, Virginia baseball field. Federal agents have now have his laptop and cell phone. They're also investigating how he knew about the practice and if he was targeting anyone specifically. Five people were hurt in that attack, including Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise. Doctors say that he may need additional rounds of surgery, though his condition has improved over the last 24 hours. Well, the annual congressional charity baseball game that Scalise and the rest of the group were practicing for when the attack happened did go on as scheduled in Washington, D.C. last night. 
Before the game, a moment of silence was held for those who were wounded. And one of the heroes, Capitol Police Officer David Bailey, threw out the ceremonial first pitch. The Democrats ended up winning the game 11 to 2, but they immediately handed the trophy off to the Republicans and asked that it be given to Scalise. Last night's event raised more than $1 million for charity. A North Dakota man is facing multiple charges after he drove past the main gates of the Grand Forks Air Force Base at 50 miles per hour. Security officers were eventually able to stop the vehicle and get him out of the car. Michael Elias of Emirato was arrested by Grand Forks County deputies for criminal trespassing. A Crookston woman has pleaded guilty to being an accessory to murder and will be sentenced in September. 42-year-old Lori Ortiz admitted in court yesterday that she was involved in destroying cell phones that were used in the planning of a murder. Last March, Austin Forsman was found shot to death at the Flying J truck stop in Grand Forks. That investigation led to the unraveling of a large meth trafficking ring. Forsman's killer, Crystal Feist of Grand Forks, will be sentenced in August. She pleaded guilty earlier this year. Well, Friday means it's time to get a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. And Fargo police are asking you to keep an eye out for this man, Jason Berking. He's wanted for possession of a controlled substance. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information. To date, the Valley's Most Wanted program has helped police make more than 575 arrests. A frenzy of movement kicked off the fifth day of deliberations in the manslaughter trial of a Minnesota police officer, but still no verdict yet. Both sides were called back into the courtroom this morning after the jury asked to have Officer Euronimo Yanez's testimony read back to them, a request the judge denied. Yanez shot and killed 32-year-old Philando Castile during a traffic stop in the Twin Cities last July. During the trial, he said he saw Castile pulling out a gun. Prosecutors say that Yanez never saw a gun and that Castile was not a threat. Well, you may want to find a new route for your driving on a busy road in South Fargo. Delays are expected for the next few weeks on 13th Avenue South. Contractors are working to repair some damaged concrete between 38th and 45th Streets. That will mean periodic lane closures. The work is expected to take up to three weeks. Over 400 people have been infected with salmonella from backyard chickens. How to prevent yourself or your kids from getting that infection is coming up. But next, meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli will be back in with weather to plan the rest of our Friday and our weekend.